Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I got this orange haze. It makes me think there might be a little smoke in the, in, the, in the sky like there might be a fire somewhere. Um, but I wanted to do just a really quick video. Another, We did this before and it helped out a lot of brethren and it helped me out to learn some things. Uh, it's a question and answer video. So basically you put a question in the, in the comment section and I will try to look into it and do a Bible study and see if God shows me or if I have to come out with the video and just say, I don't know. I mean, sometimes people ask questions that have to do with theories. Uh, they ask in-depth questions that have to do with future events that I'm not really that good at uh, uh, prophecies in the Bible, okay? Um, I can read some and try to compare some, but... Um, and the reason I do it in this form real quick, I wanted to say this. Remember, the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, and remember, my encouragement to the brethren real quick before I lose track of this is to make sure that when you're asking a question, you're asking a question because you're wanting to know the truth. There are going to be some people that try to sneak in and try to ask questions because they're trying to trip people up or they're trying to um, tear people down and destroy them. Um, please ask questions that are meant to build, build brethren up, help us stay on the right path, help us keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, and just questions in general about the Bible. I mean, we did a study on animals, their attitude towards man, um, because I found it very interesting. Um, there's all kinds of studies that might not seem too super like meat and important major doctrines and stuff like that, but there's little things in the Bible we can discuss and fellowship over. But make sure you're asking the question in earnestness and uh, because you're looking, for, you're seeking truth. You're not trying to trip people up. Okay, that's a big thing. Um, the reason I do it in video form like this, Brothers of Christ, real quick, because I did have a question asked about this. Why don't I do it live? Well, I tend to trip over myself, and I also have a hard time. The Lord's helped me. I've said this before. I have a seizure disorder. Uh, I had a heat stroke when I was in Okinawa, Japan, um, and I was in the military. I was in the Air Force. I had a major heat stroke, and it turned into seizure disorder. And I started having three to four seizures every month for almost nine years. Oh, you know, close to ten before it got completely no more seizures. Um, and I never thought, I'd always have a hard time remembering things. Or try, and even now, sometimes I have a hard time finding the words. I don't know if you've seen some of my videos where I'm like, the word disappears from my head. And I'm like, okay, we'll keep going and pray the Lord help me. And then the Lord will bring the word to me. And I'll be like, thank you, Lord. In the middle of the study, I'll be like, thank you, Lord. So this is the word I'm meant to use. And, and you keep going. All right. I understand my physical limitations. Now, I'm reminded by Peter Ruckman. You want to know a man who could do it live? And, and here's the biggest thing, too. There's two, I'll, I'll talk about a few reasons why I don't like doing live question and answers for the most part. I'll do fellowship with the brother in Christ one-on-one, -on -one, asking questions. Let's turn to the scriptures. Let's find out. And that's live. But as a whole, Peter Ruckman... I don't know if you know who he is, but Peter Ruckman's a brother in Christ. He's gone to be with the Lord years ago. He was a guy that he sat there with the Bible. When they would ask a question, he'd say, Okay, hold your finger here and turn here. And this was his answer for the most part. This was his answer. And then sometimes he'd do this, and then he'd stop and give a testimony of life events or something like that. But he'd start here, and he'd always be like, Okay, turn here with his question and answers. Turn here, turn here. What I've seen with some brethren online when they do live questions and answers, this isn't what they do. Why? Because like with me, I'd probably slip up and not always do this because I have to look it up. I have to study it. I have to put it into a Bible study form so I can preach it. Um, but off the top of my head, it's hard for me to remember addresses. And I'm learning, but God is like, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Both those are in the Psalms, but sometimes I have a hard time with them. Like what, Psalms 119 or something like that. I have a hard time with addresses, and I'm trying to work on it, but the words to me are the, the most important. But God's word's what's important, okay? But he was a man that, he's been in ministry for so long, he could do it by heart. And say, turn here, turn there, turn here, turn there. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm admitting my limitations. I can't do that. And that brings me back to why I won't do a live, a live question and answer. It's because I don't want to be one of those people that just say, I don't know, and never look into it. Or say, I'll look into it, and then never look into it. I don't know. Oh, you got me. Oh, the Bible says, but you see the Bible right here? I go like this. But the Bible says, and use my own words and everything. I don't want to be like that, brothers and sisters Christ. I want this to be the final authority, not me. 
So when I do a question and answer, if you ask questions, I'm going to do a study to make sure that this is the final authority and try to answer your question. If I don't know, then I'll just say I don't know. I don't know. There's some brethren that have asked me questions that God didn't show me the answer, and I don't know. There's times where some brethren ask questions that's something totally new to me. It's like, I've never heard of this, and I look into it and study it, and I learn something, even though I'm preaching it, I've learned something by the question that you, brother, sister Christ, have asked. That's great. I love question and answers, but I like to see it done properly. And properly is, this is the final authority. This is where the answer comes from. Not from here. Not from this man. Not just me telling stories. Not me saying, thus saith the Lord. And that's it. We're going to get into a study about someone saying that the Bible, or this is absolute truth, but does the Bible actually say it? No, that man said it. We have to just take that man at his word. No, this is the final authority. Are you going to take this as the final authority? Are you going to fall into the trap of, we did a huge study on this, respecter of persons. If that man behind the camera says it, or that man behind the pulpit says it, it's got to be truth, because he said it. The Bereans searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. And they were more, uh, they're more noble than those in Thessalonica. Thessalonica, if I can say it right. You don't just take someone at their verbal word, you compare it to the scriptures. So that's what I want with questions and answers, Brother Jesus Christ. I want to be one of those people that when you ask a question, I try to search the scriptures. Okay. Now, the Bible does say be ready to give an answer, but it doesn't say you have to give an answer on the spot. Like instantly. Sometimes giving an answer too quick, you're going to end up fumbling on yourself. There's times where you ask a question that I might think I know the answer to, and I can just jump on it. But it's a question that you've asked that I haven't done that study in years. I haven't gone over that in years. It's been years. Maybe I need to go ref sharpen my sword. In other words, I need to go back and refresh my memory. Get, uh, go back to studying some more about something I've already studied in the past. You don't always have to give an answer right on the spot. Okay? But the thing that I see with some brethren when they do question and answers, live question and answers, what you get half the time, if not more, is... I'll have to look into that. Well, I'm not, I, don't have time, I don't have time to go into that right now. How many of you heard that? When Peter Ruckman, when he'd answer the questions, when time ran out, time ran out. There was just no more questions. There's probably lots of people that still had lots of questions, but time ran out. He'd do it for two to three hours, time ran out, time ran out. But when you get online uh, live question and answers, what I see a lot is... Um, well, that's, that's, a, that's an in-depth question, and we don't really have time to go into that right now. Then why'd you ask for questions if you weren't going to answer questions? Why'd you ask for them? All right, that's my thought on it. It's like, okay, answer the question. Even if you, all you do is answer three questions in, in an hour and a half, oh, well, at least you answered it according to this. This is the foundation, and you're promoting that this is the foundation. Okay, but you get that. Uh, this is a too in depth uh, question, or this, um, I'll have to look into that, and they, half the time they never do. Um, or they'll just give you um, their version of an answer with their words, not their version, but their words. They could be preaching truth, but they're not using this as the foundation. You get used to this being the foundation. And then you say, well, thus saith Philip Newton. Philip Newton, what do you think? Philip Newton, what do you think? What do you, how do you feel? What do you. This isn't the foundation. This is. Okay? And a lot of people become respectful of persons and they forget that this is the foundation, not the man behind the camera. And a lot of times when you see the live question and answers, like I said, Peter Ruckman is the only one I know of that when he did question and answers, it was turn here, turn there, turn here. And I've listened to some of his audio tapes. But the man had been in ministry for like 30, 40 years. A lot of the Bible memorized. A lot of the Bible he's gone through a million times, probably. I'm not, I haven't done that. But the point is, is I don't want to be one of those people that just says, eh, that's an interesting question. I'll get into it. Maybe later. And then never do. Or, um, you know, uh, I just don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't know. Next. And just leaving it at that. Right? That's not how I want to do questions. That's me. I, I don't want to do questions and answers that way. When you ask a question, if I don't know, I want to actually try to look into it and say, okay, I've tried looking into it. God's not showing me. I just don't know. Or turning into a, the questions you ask, turning them into a Bible study. Okay. 
Remember, the Word of God is our foundation. This is how we're supposed to live our life. It's not about worldliness and culture. It's not about uh, traditions of men trumping the Word of God. It's not about feelings and opinions. It's thus saith the Lord. And that's how I want to be. So that's why I wanted to really push this. It wasn't supposed to be this long, just a little video. But I just want you to know, Brother Scott, that's why I don't do live question and answers. Because I don't want to be fumbling on myself because it might be an old subject that I need to refresh my memory on. And I have to work hard on my memory. And I, I'm not taking credit for it. It's all glory to God because I honestly shouldn't be, have, I shouldn't be able to remember stuff that well. The reason I'm able to now is only because of God's grace and God's mercy and the Holy Spirit. Okay? But that's why I like to do the, a little clip here and then I'll start answering any questions that get put underneath in the comment section. I'll try to do videos on them and turn them into a Bible study where I can look into them myself and actually put it out. And that's what I like doing. Um, I just don't want to become one of those men that make you dependent on me and I'll just give you... I might be preaching the truth, but there's a problem with preaching the truth without the Bible. It's just my words. Just take my word for it. And we're going to get into a study here after this that has to do with that. Okay? Some brethren are getting to the point where they're saying, thus saith the Lord, and they're not using this. Okay, It's just their words. We need to be using this, and that's what I want to instill in you, brothers and Christ. It's the Word of God that matters. So, in the comment section, if you have any questions about the Bible, okay, quite, I mean, you can ask me questions about the world, but like I said, that, that's different. When it comes to world stuff, things of the world, how to do this, how to do that, uh, I, I'll, if, I, if I have any knowledge, I'll try to tell you, but if I don't have knowledge, I'll just simply say, I've never had to do that, I don't have experience in that. Um, you know, you want to talk about chickens, I'll talk about chickens. You want to talk about the garden, uh, to a point. Um, I got a wood stove, so I'm going to start learning things about the wood stove. Uh, if you ask questions about what's going on in the world as it applies to the Bible, then we can get back into the Bible and a Bible study on it. And I'll try, but... Um, so, brothers in Christ, uh, I'll do my best, but I'm, my whole point of these questions and answers is, is fellowship and Bible studies, where I can start doing some Bible studies that, for you, brothers in Christ, that have questions that doesn't seem to ever get answered in, in, in certain ministries, including mine, that you guys never really come across those. And I've been, that question's been gnawing on me for a while. You guys never really come across it. And I, I'd like to know what, what God has shown you. And I'm all for that. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to do a question and answer series. I still go back to Peter Ruckman. I think he was the best one to ever do it because he always said, turn here, turn there. I've seen other brethren do it. And when they try to do a live study, a lot of it is, I don't know, next. That's a good question, next. Well, that's a really in-depth question. We just don't have time for it now. Next. And your questions don't ever hardly get answered. Or they'll just give you their two cents worth, their feelings, opinions, their own words, and they don't really give you a foundation. To, now you're making that man the foundation and not the Word of God. This needs to be our foundation. So this is going to be our foundation. Please, Brother Jesus Christ, I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. But there's a question and answer. Ask some sincere questions. I'll try to get into some Bible studies and uh, along with some of the others. we still got to get into our study about uh, looking. What does it mean to look for that blessed hope? Some of the brethren in ministry have turned their back on looking for that blessed hope. Some of the brethren have turned their back on looking for that blessed hope. All right. We still need to get into it. It's going to be a big series. I'm going to try to break it down. and We're going to do an individual study on every uh, every part of the list of what it means to look for Jesus Christ. So I kind of want to break it up and make it a long study. But I don't want to get so fixated on what I want to teach and preach, but what God wants, what the brethren are asking for, uh, some things that have been on your heart and on your mind of you know questions that you just can't find the answers or you want to see if my answer lines up with what God has shown you. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Put your questions in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. See you in the next video.